In today's episode, I'm covering North Carolina's favorite snack, or one of my favorite snacks at least. Hang around and I'll tell you the story of Philip Lance and Lance Crackers. Welcome to the NC Everything Podcast. I'm your host, Curtis, and this is the bi-weekly show where I talk about everything that has anything to do with North Carolina. Thank you all for coming back to listen to me, and thank you new guys for listening to me for the first time. This is another episode where I don't really have a script. Um, I have some some notes to go by, so it could be a little rockier than some of my past episodes, but I, I think we'll be okay. As you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm once again wearing one of my pretty boy, uh, I'm the boss shirts. Um, this is a brand new one, actually. I, I like this color. It feels pretty good, too. It's some of that uh, that quick dry sweat wicking material. Anyway, y'all aren't here to hear about my, 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 my wardrobe. So let's move on to the promotions. If you like the show, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Check out the Facebook group by looking at the, by checking out the links below. Uh, also in the links below is contact the website is shut down i had said that it shut down a few episodes ago but you can contact me at the nc everything podcast at gmail.com also if you're listening and you want to watch there's a link for the youtube channel and if you want to watch if you are watching and you'd rather listen i'm available on most podcast players and if you want some extra nc everything my wife and i are doing tasting nc you can find tasting nc under the the NC Everything Podcast YouTube channel. It's in YouTube form only, not podcast. But in Tasting NC, we're tasting North Carolina products. We're, we're also trying North Carolina restaurants. And we've kind of pushed the idea around of, of making meals using North Carolina products. My wife is an incredible cook. Um, we're only like three or four episodes in, um, but you can definitely check that out. That's actually why I'm doing this episode today on Lance Crackers, because Pretty soon, hopefully, I'm going to kind of make the, this podcast and Tasting NC match up. But we're going to hopefully taste Lance Cracker's products for our Tasting NC YouTube channel. And uh, like I said, hopefully, this episode and, and that video will kind of come out together. The last thing I'll say about Tasting NC, it's a monthly. We're trying for a monthly episode. Um, I think right now, it's coming out the first Saturday of every month. So uh, like I said, head over and check that out. And let's go ahead and get into the content. This story starts with Philip Lance. Now, Philip Lance was a food and coffee bean broker down in Charlotte. Well, in 1913, Philip Lance, he gets stuck with 500 pounds of raw peanuts. It was kind of a mix-up with a customer order. Instead of backing out of the deal, Lance had a revelation. He would, st- he would roast and sell the peanuts for a nickel per bag. So let me back it up again. He's a food broker. He he kind of coordinates the purchasing of bulk foods. And there was a mix up with um, one of his sales. So he had the 500 pounds of peanuts. So again, he had to figure out what to do with all these peanuts. He decides to roast them and sell them for, for a nickel per bag, five cents per bag. So he sets up on the corner of Trade Street and Tron Street down in Charlotte. And it says that that's now right there in the, in the heart of Charlotte. I don't know Charlotte that well. But that's where he sells his peanuts. And it was a, a surprising success. People couldn't buy these peanuts fast enough. In fact, he was doing so good selling these roasted peanuts, he was thinking, well, what else can I do? So he started selling peanut butter, too. He created a, a company called Queen Charlotte, and he would sell the peanut butter under Queen Charlotte's label until the 1930s. And then there was peanut brittle. The story goes, in 1914, a soldier from Camp Green shared his peanut brittle recipe with Philip Lance. Well, Philip Lance, he starts making the peanut brittle, and again, it's a huge success. And I admit, I I haven't had any of the Philip Lance or the Lance Company's peanut brittle. My wife, she makes incredible peanut brittle, and she, she copies her grandmother's recipe And we've given it out for Christmas. And like I said, that's really the only peanut brittle I've ever had. But most people say it's some of the best ever had. I don't know how to compare it. 
but I have heard that her peanut brittle is a lot more brittle than commercially made peanut brittle. I really couldn't tell you, but maybe in tasting and see, we can track down some of this Lance peanut brittle. Anyway, in 1915, Lance and his son-in-law, Salem Van Avery, Salem Van Avery, yeah, Salem Van Avery, they formally found the Lance Packing Company. It cost $600 for them to, to start that business. And I read that the reason they added packing to the name, Lance Packing Company, is because they were packing peanuts into jars. Eventually, the son-in-law, Salem Van Avery, becomes a partner. And then the company takes a turn, uh, in a good way. They were continuing to build, but then Philip Lance's daughter, Mary Arnold Lance Van Avery, she had the idea to grind the peanuts up and take that peanut butter and spread it between two saltine crackers. And today it sounds pretty obvious, you know, peanut butter crackers is, they're, they're everywhere. People take saltines. I've taken saltines with some uh, regular peanut butter. But back then there wasn't any peanut butter crackers. So when they started taking Lance peanut butter and, and putting it between two crackers, it really officially was the world's first peanut butter cracker or commercially sold peanut butter cracker. And just like with the the peanuts and the peanut butter and the peanut brittle, the Lance peanut butter crackers, they, they were a hit. So by 1922, Lance crackers were being sold all around North Carolina. Unfortunately, in 1926, Philip Lance dies in Orangeburg, South Carolina while on a sales trip. So Salem Van Avery, his son-in-law, takes control of the business and the company officially becomes the Lance Packaging Company, which is a change from the the Lance Packing Company, Packing Company. In 1935, Lance reaches its first $1 million in sales. Now, the problem is the Great Depression hit around that time. So a lot of a lot of companies tanked. But Lance, they they stayed strong and they mostly chalked it up because the or chalked it up to the fact that the crackers were still 5 cents per pack. So buying you a handful of crackers really wasn't that costly even during the Great Depression. In 1938, Lance starts making their own crackers. So before now, you know, they would outsource the crackers and then put their peanut butter in there. 1938, they start making their own crackers. And by 1939, they introduce Toast Chi. Toast chi. And I call them Toasty because I don't know how to talk right, but it's actually Toast Chi. So toasted crackers or toasted cheese crackers. Toast Chi. And Toast Chi is probably their their biggest product even today. My vending machine at work, you can find Toast Chi's in them. That same year, 1939, Lance changes its name to Lance Incorporated. By 1943, the company had grown to $9 million in sales. And that's $9 million in 1943 money. That's $134 million in today's money. Unfortunately, that same year, 1943... Philip Van Avery passed away. I'm sorry, Salem Van Avery. Salem Van Avery passed away in 1943. He leaves the company, or the company is inherited by his son, Philip Van Avery. So it goes from Philip Lance to Salem Van Avery to Philip Van Avery. In 1954, Hello Snack Machines hit the market, and this was like the this was the first time that you could find Lance crackers in a vending machine. In 1960, you could find Lance Crackers in 24 states. By 1940, by 1973, it was an $80 million company with 4,500 employees in 34 states. Also in 1973, Philip Van Avery retires. Now, before the 80s, if you wanted Lance Crackers, you could find them in vending machines or you could buy them, like, I guess, wholesale by the pack. But in the mid-1980s, that's when they started adding grocery stores to their distribution. So now you can go up to, to Lowe's Food, North Carolina product. You can go up to Lowe's Food and buy Lance Crackers if you wanted to. And this is probably going to be a, one of my shorter episodes, but I'm going to keep going through the timeline. In 2009, Lance added whole grain crackers to their, which Lance added whole grain to their, their, their product line. And these were 100 calories these were 100 calorie packs. And I've actually had the, the whole grain Lance. Um, I, I don't mind them either. In 2010, Snyder's of Hanover, which is a Pennsylvania-based company, they purchased Lance crackers. 
and they join they form a new company called Snyder's Lance. In 2014, Lance Crackers became the official cracker of Little League Baseball and Softball. And then in 2018, Campbell Soup Company bought Snyder's Lance for $50 per share. And it ultimately cost about $6.1 billion. And since Campbell Soup is based out of Camden, New Jersey, this was the first time that Lance Crackers was officially not a North Carolina company. And before I wrap up, I just want to go through a couple more of Lance's products. The Neecock Cookies. Now, I love the Neecock Cookies. I actually used to get them out of, an, out of the vending machine at work, and I would da- dip the Neecock Cookies, Neecock Cookies into my coffee. And I'm not sure if that's a weird thing or not. My mama used to do it when, when I was a kid, and so I got where I'd, I'd also dip my cookies in coffee. But supposedly the Neecock cookies are named Neecock because during the packaging one point, they were they used to be called token cookies. And one day the, the wrapping machine got messed up and it wrapped the token cookies inside out. And so it said Neecock instead of token and the name took off. Now, I don't know if that story true. All my notes all say allegedly. Um, who knows? And then there's Captain's Wafers. Supposedly, Captain's Wafers are named after Van Every's boat captain at his beach house in Georgetown, South Carolina. Again, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, maybe we'll never know. And that's the end of my Lance Crackers episode. Um, and I named off you know, the Toast Cheese, the Neecock Cookies, the Captain's Wafers. Again, I don't mean to, to kick a, a horse here, but when uh, me and my wife do Tasting NC, I'm going to try to get together every Lance product I can find, and we'll taste them on our YouTube channel. So I'll give you a better rundown of all the, the Lance products. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the show, and if you did, don't forget to rate, subscribe, and review, and uh, check out the Facebook group, check out the YouTube channel, hit the contact button to send me your suggestions, and speaking of suggestions, this also wasn't a listener suggestion. I, I will be getting back to the listener suggestions in the next episode. I, again, I wanted to, I got a lot of crime and stuff, and I got some other stuff, but I wanted to kind of do them in order. So I wanted to take a break from the violence for a little bit and and talk about something a little bit lighter. But uh, going forward, I'm going to get back into the listener suggestions. And I don't know if the next one's going to be a violent one, although I got a few of them on tap. But uh, if you have a suggestion, feel free to send it in. I do have several, and it is a bi-weekly show, so it will take a little while to get through all the suggestions I have right now. And I, I do love the suggestions. I love hearing feedback from all the listeners. You don't have to email me with a suggestion. You can email me just say hello, like the show, or hate the show, or or anything you want. I just I like hearing from all of you. I like knowing I'm I'm making people happy. But anyway, I'm getting into that that rambling form. So uh, I'll just wrap this show up by saying I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. <laughs>